from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of three takes on the new Israel, Parshat Chukat. In the Parshat of Chukat, we discover that all of a sudden Israel emerges. There's something called Yisrael, not B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, but simply Yisrael. And they are, I must say, magnificent. They start off in a pedestrian way. The expression first appears that uh, Edom did not allow Yisrael to pass, and Yisrael moved aside. Not sure what that represents exactly. Then there is a, a reversion to the notion of B'nai Yisrael, and then Aaron dies. And then there is a, a war, and Yisrael, Israel as an entity, vows to God that if they win, they will give the spoils to God. And, um, and then it says that uh, something new happened that never happened before, that the, the people came and they said they sinned. They confessed their sins. That never happened before. And Moshe prayed for the Jews. And they had this snake that went up uh, to, if they saw the snake, they would be healed from um, the snake bites. And then it does revert to the expression, B'nai Yisrael. But then uh, it says, Az Yashir Yisrael, that then not Moshe and the Jews sang a song like they did at the sea, but rather Israel sang a song all by themselves. Then Israel sends messengers to Sichon. It's really uh, very exciting what happens in our parsha. They begin to conquer uh, the land of Israel. By Yeshav Yisrael, Beretz Amori, the, the Israelites began to dwell in the land of the Amorites, which although it was on the other side of the Jordan, they were living in Israel. So something very exciting is happening in our parsha. This is not the Jews that we remember from the bickering Jews and the problematic Jews and the quarreling Jews and the complaining Jews. This is very exciting. Parshat Chukat is not like Parshat Balotcha, Shlach, and Korach, where the Jews are rebelling and complaining and whining and crying. This is very exciting. Something new is happening. So the question is, why now? What happened? What, what's the meaning of the new Jews, the new Israel? Idea number one. Idea number one is and it's reflected by Rabbi Menachem Liebtag and others, that somehow the Moshe and Aaron, they became the obstacle. Strangely enough, although Moshe and Aaron obviously were the great leaders of Israel, but at this point, when they start to wane, when God says, look, you hit the rock, you're not going to bring the Jews into Israel. That's when the Israel began to emerge. When, as Moshe and Aaron fade away, and Aaron literally passes the baton to his son, now... Israel emerges. It took the passing of the previous generation for the new generation to emerge. The problem with that is that Moshe is very much still there. Uh, Moshe sends messengers to Edom. Moshe uh, is involved in conquering uh, Sihon. Moshe sends spies. So I'm not sure you can say that it's totally Moshe going away. It could suggest something kind of radical that Aaron went away. And although Aaron was a great lover of Israel, maybe he was like that mother who babies and pampers the children too much. When he went away, the Jews had to live, as Rabbi Amnon Bazak said, a little more in the fear factor. They had to live with Moshe, who was letter of the law. And actually, they did better with that. Sometimes people are pampered too much. You know, everything you do is okay, blah, blah, blah. And when Aaron passes away, although they cried bitterly, really the Jews do better with Moshe at the helm, that was the original idea. Moshe was supposed to lead by himself, not with Aaron. So that's a radical suggestion. I'll leave that as 1A. Suggestion number two, is right by Amnon Bazak, he claims that it's a change of, of fear, that uh, the Jews are supposed to worship God through love, but here they switch to fear because they're, they're sent snakes, and the snakes make them fearful, and now in a, in a relationship of greater fear, the Israel emerges. However, the problem with that is, is that Israel is already making vows uh, before the snakes hit. Um, so I, I don't know that, that, that they're referred to as Israel right away after the burning, after the hitting of the rock. They're immediately referred to as Israel. So I don't know that uh, it is related to uh, the, the change of the element of fear. 
So I'd like to suggest the third option, uh, and namely that, what do we have here in this Parsha? Well, Rabbi Salvatio already pointed out that when you have the laws of the red heifer, the laws of death, basically, at the beginning of the Parsha, extensive section about death, which really belongs somewhere else in Vayikra or something like that, um, or it, it alludes to the death of the Jews for 38 years. On the other, on the, on the back side of the 38 years, the beginning of this Parsha, we had last week, which was the second year in the desert. This year, this week, we're already with the death of Miriam and Aaron. We're in the 40th year. So we skipped 38 years. What happened in 38 years? Everyone died. How is that expressed? The laws of death. So what do we have here? The new generation. That explains the heading of the rock story. When Moshe hit the rock, what's the problem? In, in, in Bishalach, he hit the rock. It wasn't a problem. Yeah, but it's a new generation. You can't call them rebels. They're not rebels. They're just hungry. They're thirsty. You've got to talk to them nicely. It's a whole different generation. This is not the problematic generation that came before. You're going, you're going crazy. You're going, you're going overboard, hitting the rock and calling them rebels and all that. That's, it's not necessary, hitting the rock twice. It's not necessary. The Jews are, are, are much better. And the proof is that as soon as that story is over, they are better. The Jews, what do they do? Uh, they, uh, uh, they, they, they move as one, as Israel, away from Edom. They, um, they vow uh, to God. They, um, um, what else do they do? Uh, they, uh, they, they say they have sinned, uh, etc. They sing a song to God like Moshe used to do. Uh, it's unbelievable they conquered the land of Israel and they dwell in the land of Israel. This is a new generation. And that's what was wrong with hitting the rock. It's not, hitting the rock was, was fine. In, in the previous generation, it was fine. They were rebels, but these are not rebels. These are Israel, and Israel is ready to conquer the land. So there's no particular event that takes place that changes them and more, metamorphosizes them from B'nai Israel to Yisrael, from the sinful uh, complainers to the very active Israel that we find here in the Parsha. We're simply dealing with a different generation. And from now on, it's all smooth sailing. Now, there's a little hiccup there in Parshat uh, Balak. We'll get to next week, God willing, Pinchas. But uh, other than that, it's a whole new Israel. And Moshe, by not recognizing that, that was his sin. And everything in this Parsha is all about the new uh, Israel. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sephardi Beth Lameth Congregation for our discussion of the Parsha. Join us each week for a discussion of the Parsha on the holidays. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.